by Extra Points publisher Matt Brown, who has paid the cost to be the boss. As a say in journalism, the best thing about this profession is being able to call BS. Matt, how you doing, man? Man, I, I'm I'm doing great. It's been a very a very busy morning. I'm making a whole lot of new Oklahoma State fan friends. I'll tell you what. Well, you are making those friends because uh, this morning you published an investigative piece called Inside the Mike Gundy PR Crisis, as told by emails we foia'd. And first question I had for you, because we started the show with this, how many emails are we talking about? Because you have emails from all sorts of people. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of emails that we got that we didn't actually put in this article or, or we didn't host on the website. The biggest group of those were emails just from regular old fans of boosters, you know, and I think probably got 70 emails in the batch and from, from fans, honestly, it was about 50, 50 in terms of people supporting Gundy or people supporting Chuba. A lot of the folks that were supporting Gundy, pretty racist. <laughs> Felt like there wasn't really a, a, a big public need to, to necessarily amplify those opinions, but you, you heard, feedback from a lot of different people and, and then also when you foil an athletic director you're going to get all kinds you know every 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 newsletter they subscribe to every junk mail thing that pops up and we all got that too there, there was a lot of stuff to uh to sit through to try and tell the story i am floored by not just mike gundy's email of saying that he wanted oan merchandise back in april and then telling us he did not know what oan was about in june but this email in particular from uh, Booster, right? Uh, it, er, Peter er, Erdios, who had given a million dollars yeah. to the scholarship fund, talked about what not one not just wanting him suspended, but also the racial slur. And I wondered if there was any more context to add to that. For, for that particular email, no. Okay. But it, it is, you know, we, 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 we requested a relatively limited time frame. So it's certainly possible after July 15th or after July 16th, a little bit later on, or June 16th, rather, then there may have been more people reaching out. But it, it does speak to, a, I think, a theme that we saw from a couple of different emails. We take the college football program being the front porch to your university a lot. And when that team is successful or when it's doing, you know, when it's good as graduating players, or it's doing things a certain way, a university benefits in a lot of different ways. It, it helps drive enrollment. It helps drive alumni donations. Uh, it might even have a small effect for recruiting and retaining faculty. But between that booster email and from some concerns from, from people who teach at Oklahoma State, it also means that if you have a football program that's embarrassing you, uh, it, it, it can hurt your program, your university, in some pretty substantial ways. You had people who were you know, concerned that, hey, like, listen, it's hard enough to recruit minority faculty to come to Stillwater anyway. When they see stuff like this from our, our highest paid and most prominent employee, that's going to make that harder. When you're somebody who's investing millions of dollars in the academic reputation of the school, you're giving a lot of money, you see this as an embarrassment, it's a distraction. And so, you know, these are the things here that athletic directors, university presidents, administrators all have to navigate pretty quickly because, you know, if you're going to spend $4 million on a football coach, you're paying for a lot more than just wins and losses. What time frame did you request the emails from? Because things have happened since the t-shirt was photographed and then posted to twitter and chuba hubbard quote tweeted it I, you know i want to i i want to have to step and re look at the request again I, I think it was the day before the first press conference so that would have been like april 9th through i think 17th so it, when you when you file I, when some of these requests and especially now with so many state employees working from home it takes a long time to respond and so, sure, if we, if we filed another one and, and tried to just get stuff that was sent in July, I'm sure it would look a little bit different. This was a, trying to create a small snapshot of what was happening at Oklahoma State right after the photograph came, you know, came out and who responded immediately. I think the feedback a week or two after everything might have looked a little bit different. Talking with publisher of Extra Points, Matt Brown, uh, and off-the-field sports newsletter that covers college sports and higher education. Really interesting stuff. Uh, I've learned a lot since my own subscription has uh, continued to inform me about what's going on across the country, not just at Oklahoma State. I thought it was interesting that you decided to put in as the kicker to your story here that Courtney Bay, who is creative director for OSU Athletics, was like, hey, that iPhone video? No, we, we can't do that because I, was, I, I made fun of it. I was critical of it. 
forget the message that was in it, but I thought that that was interesting. Did you see anything else to that effect of it was interesting to see, one, somebody point that out, but also more interesting that Oklahoma State was already trying to draft a statement on Gundy's behalf when it looks like he just jumped the gun and made a video. I, I, it looks like that's exactly what happened. The guy shot from the hip, and, and that's what Oklahoma State told us when we, we reached out and asked, uh, asked for some comment on some of these emails. And, and that was honestly one of the, the stories that we were trying to convey. And I've had a couple of different people who work in athletic communications or PR departments across the country who have said, you know, hey, man, this, this happens more often than you might think. And like I, I published that not to not to dunk on anybody in the creative services department because I honestly think this is a, a legit criticism. Um, it is hard when you are trying to, to get your arms around a fast moving PR crisis. You have a lot of smart people at this university who work in their creative services department, their video department, these outside communications department, and uh, th- this was not the message that they wanted to convey right off the bat. That the, the first apology video you know got made fun of a lot, and I think probably made things a little bit worse. It might have been better for OSU. It might have been better for Hubbard. It might have been better for a lot of people if they had just slowed down and gotten this right. Um, but, you know, maybe from, from looking at some of these other emails or listening to some of these other press conferences, that's not necessarily Gundy style. I thought it was interesting, one, that he had received correspondence from OAN as soon as April, but even more so that, uh, as you laid out, uh, the chief White House correspondent for OAN shot her shot in the middle of this firestorm. And I wanted to know if there was any more correspondence going back and forth about what Mike Gundy and OAN might be trying to do via his his guns at OKState.edu OK address. <laughs> yeah, can we can we take a minute? Look, regardless of how you feel about OAN or Mike Gundy or OAN or any of this stuff, guns at OKState.edu OK is a pretty great email address. Oh man, I, no, I, it was I, fantastic. I respect Gundy for doing that. Right? You could go with like Gundy dot two or whatever or M Gundy. No, go with guns. I like it. It's Oklahoma, man. It's Oklahoma. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Oklahoma. It, it, and it, it's who he is and who that the mascot is. Look, it's, it's, it's great. Like, I'm honestly really saying that's a good thing. No, we didn't get anything else. Okay. And, it, you know, it's possible that they might have texted or, or called. You know, we, we didn't get the, the phone records to part of this. But it was, <laughs> I do think it's pretty clear. OSU is trying to restrict the media availability and trying to create some kind of unified message throughout all of this. The worst thing in the world that could have happened would have been for him to show up at the Trump rally and, and, and speak to OAN afterwards, right? Like, regardless of, of your individual politics or, you know, or anybody else's, when you're trying to quell this, the, a, a lot of, of athlete frustration. And, and let's be clear. Remember, for, for, for Chuba and for uh, you know, a lot of these players, it wasn't just about the shirt, man. Like, the shirt is a symptom, a, a, another way of displaying – some deeper cultural issues and disconnects between Gundy and those athletes. If it's just a shirt, you know, people might, you know, you might have a couple of, of, of complaining tweets or people would, would gossip about it in the locker room, but it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Like, Mike, Mike Leach probably owns one of those shirts. <laughs> like, you know, the, the political difference in those two guys, not very different, but you're not having the same locker room situation. There's a, probably a lot of college football coaches who are OAN adjacent, um, and but if you run your program a certain way, it's not going to be as big of an issue with your players. You don't have to agree on everything. And in and, and this particular situation, I think it's clear, there's some stuff going on here beyond the shirt. I have moved past the, the political aspects of this, right, and tried to focus on what I believe the central theme of this report is, which is decency. Did you tell us the truth, and did you tell us what you believe, and that being the truth? Is that what you were striving for, or what were you, what were you looking What did Not what were you looking for. What did you find out after thinking about what you wanted to say and what you wrote down? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. So, I mean, to be candid with you, the biggest reason that we, you know, filed this request, and, and to be clear, I've been filing similar requests after stories, you know, similar to this, you know, for, for the last several years. You can look at SB Nation whenever there's a, an uproar at a public institution that has relatively liberal open records laws, I'm going to try to file a request to see what people are saying. And one of the, the, the big things that I wanted to show here, and for my newsletter, which is to, which writes a lot about what happens behind the scenes, I wanted to show people how this sausage gets made. I wanted to demonstrate that when you're an athletic director and you've got a, a high-profile coach who sometimes says things that he doesn't want to say and shoots from the hip, that you have a, a lot of 
uh, real-time crisis communications that you have to manage while also having to do other stuff. Like this guy's trying to figure out what to do with T. Boone Pickens' like, grave site. He's trying to manage some other athletic department uh, you know, you know, chores and, and tasks. You know, OSU is a big school. While also figuring out what the hell, to, what, what the hell to do with Mike Gundy. Um, I feel like I'm probably not going to change anybody's mind about the sincerity of Gundy's apology or about OAN or the shirt, right? The emails are the emails. And you can look at that text and you can listen to what he said and you can make up your own mind about whether he was telling the truth or not. Because at the end of the day, Mike Gundy is not accountable to me. I'm a writer who lives a thousand miles away. Mike Gundy should be accountable to his players and to the rest of the campus community. And they can look at those emails and they can, you know, they, they know him better than I do. They can listen to what he says and they can make that determination for themselves. And whatever they decide, it's fine with me. When you are putting together this sort of story, I'm always interested from an investigative aspect of when you decide to reach out for comment from Oklahoma State. And it sounds like you you had done that just by asking, yo, uh, yes. can I get some clarification about the time frame for this statement that you guys were drafting and him putting together this video? Does Oklahoma State have anything to say about what you have written? Uh, if they have, I haven't heard anything back from them. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give credit to them. They responded very quickly. We reached out for comment yesterday after Daniel and I had a chance to really go through everything uh, that, that had been written. And, you know, since we're not really we're, Daniel and I, I don't think, really put our own opinion in this story very much. It's mostly, hey, these are all the public records. Here's, here's, here's what came back. And we'll let the reader kind of connect those dots. But, you know, credit to OSU for responding quickly and then clarifying some of those things. And if if anybody at the school or athletic department objects to anything that we wrote or says it was inaccurate or unfair, um, I haven't heard from them yet. Maybe they will later today, but I haven't heard that yet. From fans, sure. <laughs> from the school, no. No, uh, fans, we're, we're, we're going to do what we're going to do. And you know that yeah, almost as much fine. as did it. Yeah, yeah right, as anybody else. Uh, this I'm not is angry about it. I'm, well, if anything, you get to laugh, though, right? I mean, I, I got to ask how you are. How are you dealing with the response to this? And I don't want to assume I know how you're dealing with it. So, how are you dealing with the response to this? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it, it's fine. I, I've got, I've gotten people way angry at me for stuff that I've written before. I mean, if you if you don't, if you're somebody who likes OAN or who thinks that this story's already been adjudicated and is over with. And you think I'm, I'm digging, st- you know, digging stuff up just to embarrass the program, or whatever. I, I'm not, but I understand why a fan would, would would yell that or anything, right? I would have written this much quicker if I'd gotten the emails much quicker. But uh, open records requests take a long time, um, especially when people are away from their desks right now. So that that's that's the timing. I'll write as quickly as I get the stuff back. But I don't don't worry about me. The people we should worry that we should worry about are people within the Oklahoma State Athletic Program or this football team that weren't happy with how things are going, right? Somebody's sending me a mean tweet, you know, maybe I'll be mad about it, but I'm a grown-up. Uh, I'll be okay. I'm, I, if the, the, somebody who's in a situation with their football coach or with, that, with their campus culture where they don't feel safe or supported or that they don't feel like their dignity as a human being is being respected, that's a way bigger deal. It's Matt Brown. Subscribe to the newsletter he publishes called Extra Points in partnership with the Intercollegiate does tremendous work uh, four days a week. This newsletter comes out. It's one of the first things in my inbox that I open. Matt, thanks so much for your time, man. I appreciate this. Hey, anytime. Anytime. I'm happy to do it. Be well.